everybody, we are Natalia Artal and Gustavo Perez from the Battery System Team at Ideada and today we will talk about batteries for electric vehicles. Specifically, this presentation will be focused on battery management system and recycling topics. First, the general structure and main functions of a BMS will be briefly explained before going more in depth about other concepts as battery behavior and modeling, state estimation or the optimization of how the energy is used in a battery. Finally, an overview of the recycling process will be presented. The battery management system, or BMS, is the electronic circuit which continuously controls the battery operation. Its main purpose is to guarantee the battery safe performance, ensuring that it works in the appropriate operating window to avoid damages. To achieve all these targets, there are a number of functions which must be performed by the BMS. Firstly, it needs to monitor all battery parameters including cell voltages, temperatures and current. The insulation resistance in a battery pack or the status of serial protection components as the high voltage interlock, fuse or relays can be also monitored. Using all the gathered data, the BMS can diagnose the battery state and calculate its parameters as the state of charge, state of health or state of power. With this information, the BMS can perform other functions as electrical, thermal or energy management and other tasks as communications with the vehicle or data logging. The BMS in an electric vehicle is normally built with a master slave architecture. The slaves collect data from its cell and module and send this information to other slaves and the master. The master performs more complex algorithms to take decisions, includes the current measurement in the battery pack and controls active components as the main contactors. Next slides will explain some of the aforementioned BMS functions. A battery pack is made of several interconnected cells where the energy is stored. When these cells are connected in parallel, they are automatically balanced as they share the same voltage. However, when the cells are connected in series, their voltage and state of charge changes during the pack operation and it can vary from cell to cell due to manufacturing differences or unequal temperature distribution. Then, when the pack is charging, the cell with the highest voltage limits the amount of energy which can be stored and the same effect occurs with the cell with the lowest voltage during the discharge. This reduces the amount of usable energy in the pack. To solve this problem, balancing circuit are installed in the battery and controlled by the BMS. The balancing circuit equalizes the stored energy of each cell so the available energy with a number of cycles can be optimized. Also, with increase of cycles and time, the battery ages and its capacity and power capability are reduced. This aging depends on various factors as the shocks range during the cycles, the number of cycles itself, the working temperature or the current. For example, higher temperature causes a faster aging. To minimize this degradation, several strategies can be followed. The first of them is to reduce the usable state of charge limits so the available energy in each cycle is lower, but the capacity reduction will be minimized over time. To reduce the impact of high currents and heating, the battery cooling system has a crucial importance as it can extend the lifetime of the pack as at the expense of losing a part of the available energy. When this system is not enough to prevent the battery pack temperature increase, the BMS can also establish power limitations depending on the state of charge and temperature to reduce the demanded current or power and preventing further heating. As previously explained, other important functions in the BMS require the battery state estimation. The state of charge calculates the remaining energy in the battery, but it cannot be directly measured. Certain parameters depend on the state of charge as the battery voltage, the open circuit voltage or the impedance, but they are also influenced by other factors which difficult the state of charge estimation. The most straightforward way to calculate the state of charge is the column counting method, which is based in the current integration to obtain the amperes hour throughput in the battery. The problem of this method is that it requires a known initial point to start the count and as it depends on an integration, measurement errors or changes in the capacity can lead to inaccurate estimations. Then, 
it is common to recalibrate the stock estimation in some specific points to reduce this incremental error. More advanced methods have been also investigated as the use of state observers or Karman filters to achieve a more precise estimation, but they require complex calculations, including the online computation of an accurate model to improve the estimation results. The state of health indicates the battery aging over time. Again, this parameter cannot be directly measured, although some parameters as the internal resistance or the impedance change during the battery lifetime. Coulomb counting method can also be used to infer the capacity through the measurement of the transfer charge. More complex adaptive methods at smooth scale observers have been also proposed in the literature. We have seen that some of the functions performed by a BMS require the use of a battery model. A model is used to represent a cell or battery behavior, calculating the voltage response from the model inputs, which can be current or temperature, among others. There are two main types of models. On the one hand, electrochemical models represent the internal processes occurring in the cells, so they are accurate but also complex and require knowledge of all internal parameters. On the other hand, electrical equivalent circuits only relate model inputs and outputs and do not represent the real chemical processes. However, they have a lower computational cost, so they are suitable for their application in BMS. An electrical equivalent circuit model has two main parts. The first one is a voltage source representing the open circuit voltage, which can vary with shock and temperature. Secondly, an RC circuit is used to model dynamic effects in the voltage when a current is injected or demanded to the battery. This behavior also depends on the state of charge and the temperature, so lookup tables can be used to model the effect. Open circuit voltage increases with the state of charge. When the temperature rises, the curve which relates open circuit voltage and state of charge goes up, showing that the open circuit voltage also increases with temperature. On the contrary, internal resistance decreases with temperature. As shown in the picture on the right, the voltage drop with a current pulse is lower when the temperature is higher due to its smaller internal resistance. Battery weight management. The battery life cycle covers different stages from battery manufacturing to its disposal. The battery manufacturer will design and validate a battery pack according to functional, performance, durability and safety premises whose beneficial owner will be the EV user. The EV user will write this EV until battery end of life or approximately 80% of initial capacity, which represents a 20% of battery capacity degradation. Once the battery arrives at its end of life, a status assessment will be performed to determine the appropriate transport. Finally, the battery will be disposed and recycled in a recycling plant. During this explanation, we'll be focused on transport boundary conditions and disposal. If the battery is determined as battery in good conditions, there will not be rest of fire, neither loss of electrolyte, no evidence of holes, no deformations, no insulation failures and temperature voltage will be within battery operational limits. If a battery meets all these points, will be categorized as a battery in good conditions. On the contrary, if there is evidence of some of the previous points, the battery can be categorized as a battery damaged or defective. And it should be marked in the labeling apart from metal boxes for its transport. Whenever the battery arrives at recycling plant, first step is to evaluate associated documentation and verify that all information is in order. Second step is discharging the battery in order to avoid thermal events in the recycling plant. Third step entails the mechanical battery dismantling by sorting different materials, plastics, bus bars, electronic components and finally the cells. Finally, cells will be converted in black mass in order to recover as much materials as possible thanks to different processes with different recycling rates.